Patrick, you got the Sonos Roam that's going to be available tomorrow. It's a speaker for under 200 bucks, which is a space that you guys used to not touch. Makes me wonder, are the economics of music changing, not just on the audio front, as we've been talking about with Clubhouse earlier today, but also when it comes to hardware? Well, good morning, John. I think the, you know, really the story for us is extending the, you know, capabilities of Sonos and our first product, like you mentioned, the Rome outside the home. Um, and we happen to be able to, you know, use some of our learnings really over the last 20 years in developing products uh, to make this something that does come in below that $200 price point. But last year we introduced, you know, an $800 uh, soundbar, the Arc, which has been uh, the number one soundbar uh, in many of the countries that we're in. And so, you know, our whole portfolio is a mix of different products and the power is in the fact that they all work together as one system. One of the things that we've talked about over the last few quarters is the direct relationship with the consumer that you built up throughout 2020 and how powerful that has been for you. So I wonder with these upcoming changes to iOS 14 and this debate over how much it's going to affect small business, uh, a lot of small businesses are trying to go direct like you are. Would this hurt you uh, or is the way you've built your business such that you don't need the kinds of passive data that the, the likes of Facebook and others in the app economy have been relying on? Yeah, we like to, you know, we like to be really specific. I think everybody does in terms of who they're targeting. But I love the fact too that there's transparency here. And and we've been a company that from the beginning has been very transparent and in, in getting people to opt in to what they're providing to us. And I think that is the right way for us to go in tech in general. I think one of the things to watch, John, is does Apple hold that same bar to their own apps, right? So are they asking, you know, permission for you to use each of their apps in the system and asking for that same opt-in? As long as they're holding themselves to the same bar, I think it's fair for everybody in the ecosystem. And there's ways to target customers and work through it. So I don't think this is going to be a big a big impact for, uh, for people in general. And I think most consumers, unlike you, are going to opt in, uh, just as they've done with cookies and accept everything that pops up on every website. So um, I don't think it's going to be much of a bump in the road for most companies. I'm in John's camp, but uh, I know I know many are not, Patrick. Uh, good morning, by the way. It's Deirdre. Morning. Uh, Sonos has certainly held its own against uh, tech giants, even when they're undercutting your devices with their own smart speakers. Earlier this morning, we were talking about Clubhouse and expecting Facebook to come after them with its own audio product and massive scale. What advice might you give another company when they're sort of about to go head to head with big tech? Well, I think, first of all, it's a great sign that, you know, I've been saying for a while, we're in the golden age of audio and we're, we're watching the rise of now social audio just on top of that great growth we've seen in streaming music, in podcasts, in audiobooks. I mean, the last few years have been tremendous. And so um, I think it's different, quite frankly, Deirdre, when, a, when another big tech company is jumping in because they don't have the same constraints. So, uh, you know, I think um, having watched what Facebook's done when competing against companies like Snap, I expect they'll go in guns a blazing, uh, you know, and not spare any expense, which is quite different than, you know, the way a company like ours uh, has to compete uh, in this kind of, you know, in, in this kind of environment and having to make sure that you're both getting the intellectual property that you need. Uh, to ensure that your inventions are being properly protected. And then you need to continue to innovate and compete and make money so that you can fuel your growth and kind of go through those things. So um, I think Facebook has a playbook um, based on what they've done, you know, when they started to bring out um, Instagram stories and, um, you know, and they just rush in and, and they're able to throw a whole bunch of resources at these things. So it'll be interesting. You know, we've always one by supporting everybody in the industry and, and finding that right balance in terms of offering all the services. And so um, the more players, the better from my perspective.